on the call today is the senior lead team of Indus Towers Limited. Before I hand over the call, I must remind you that the overview and discussions today may include said and proper looking statements that must be viewed in conjunction with the risks that we face. I now hand over the call to our first speaker of the day, Mr. Bimal Dayal. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Dayal. Thank you, thank you, uh, thank you all for joining us on the earnings call of Indus Towers for the full year ended 31st March 2021. And very good afternoon to each one of you. Joining me on the call today are Mr. Vikas Poddar, our CFO, Mr. Vinod Rao, business controller. Kostak Niyogi, Finance Controller, and Surbhi Chandana, Investor Relations. As a start, I'm happy to announce that we have delivered a strong quarter four and a strong full year performance. On a full year basis, we have largest ever net tower additions of 10,223. If you may recall that quarter one was muted due to lockdown, uh, which signifies massive ramp up of deliveries during these next three quarters. I think it happened around the same time you would recall that uh, we were we were struggling with the lockdowns uh, previous year. On the churn side, the churn had nearly halved, which augurs well. We ended the year at 1,79,000 towers 322,000 co-locations, which represent a healthy growth of 6% uh, and 4% respectively. On quarterly basis, we delivered yet another all-time high net tower additions of 3,715 towers. Our net co-locations increased by 4,128, including churn of 856. This will be reflected in financial results, which will be shared with you all soon. Before I, I go into any other aspect, uh, I wanted to touch upon the market first. And that too, starting from the demand side. Well, on the demand side, the industry data volumes continue to grow, as you would know. And this growth is fairly rapid. We are, we are witnessing, once again, a growth of almost 40% year on year. Uh, which is already on a very large base. This is driving and will continue to drive growth. With operators announcing a race towards 5G makes the infra space even more relevant. We also saw spectrum auctions taking place, which saw participation from all three players, uh, but it was somewhat asymmetric. All in all, we see the space in which we operate is becoming more and more relevant. On the strategic endeavors uh, within the company, I'm very happy to report that integration efforts are in full swing and most importantly on target. I'm also happy to state that we've concluded our mission, vision and values exercise involving pretty much all the employees across the geographies and it's my belief, and I think it is fairly well documented that uh, uh, this forms the culture of any organization. And as you would know, culture beats the strategy no matter how good your strategy is. So this is an important piece of base which we touched uh, this quarter involving all the employees uh, as well. Uh, we have started the process of revalidation of our strategy. And in coming quarters, we will share the changes and augmentation, if any. Meanwhile, we are aligned to the strategy which was shared with you earlier. I cannot sign off uh, without touching upon the COVID situation. On the COVID situation, our Braveheart field force continues to provide network connectivity, basis which India today is fighting this pandemic as a, as a fact that the call which I'm holding, or a lot of you would be holding, is actually being maintained by a lot of brave thoughts who are actually uh, uh, looking at and making sure that network is alive 24 cross 7. And this forms one of the most important tools of fighting this uh, pandemic. Our endeavor is to keep everyone safe at all times. 
and we also are making sure that during these times when the uptime is uh, of the highest priority, we are delivering our best operational uptime for our customers as well. I'll be very happy to take questions with this. I would like to hand over to Vikas to take you through the financial results. Over to you, Vikas. Thank you, Vimal, and uh, a very good afternoon to all the participants on this call. So I'm pleased to share with you the results of the fourth quarter and the year ended 31st March 2021 for the merged Indus Towers with the full consolidation of the erstwhile Indus Towers and Bharti Infotel. As stated in the last quarter, we continue to report our numbers on performer basis, assuming that the merger was effective from the earlier periods. Uh, this is to ensure right comparatives for all the periods. I will start with the financial highlights from a full year perspective. Our revenues grew 0.4% uh, year on year to rupees 256.7 billion. Within that, our sharing revenue has shown a healthy growth of 3.9% year on year. Our EBITDA grew 4.2% year on year to rupees 132.6 billion. Our profit before tax is up by about 4% year on year to rupees 66.5 billion. Our profit after tax was down by 1% year on year at 49.8 billion, but this was mainly due to a one time impact resulting from the change in tax rate last year. Adjusting for the same, our profit after tax would have been up by about 5% year on year. Operating free cash flow has increased by 0.8% year on year to rupees 71.2 billion. Our return on capital employed and return on equity post-tax for the quarter were at 22.1% and 29.6% respectively, same as last year. I will now come to the financials for the fourth quarter. In the fourth quarter, our revenues grew 2.9% year on year to rupees 64.9 billion. In the same quarter, our EBITDA was up by 17.5% year on year to rupees 34.1 billion. Our profit before tax was up by 36.4% year on year to rupees 18 billion. And our profit after tax was up by 38.3% year on year to rupees 13.6 billion. Our operating free cash flows increased by 1.9% year on year to rupees 14.9 billion. So as you can see from the figures above, our financial performance has been strong in this year, despite the operational challenges posed by the pandemic and the challenges facing the telecom sector. Furthermore, you would recall from the last quarter that we had higher exit revenue as a result of change in accounting practice of recognizing exit revenues on a cruel basis due to certainty of receivables coming out of the security package. The current run rate of exit revenue is between 1.7 billion to rupees 1.8 billion per quarter. Adjusted for this and other one-offs in the last quarter, which is quarter three, our sequential performance both in top line and bottom, bottom line remains very healthy. Our energy margins continue to be negative. However, there is an improvement over last quarter due to sustained efforts by the company in resolving differences with our customers. So with that, I would like to open the floor for question and answers, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer interactive session for all the participants who are connected to the audio content service from Airtel. Due to time constraints, we would request if you could limit the number of questions to two to enable more participation. Hence, management will take only two questions per participant to ensure maximum participation. Participants who wish to ask questions may please press star 1 on your touchstone-enabled telephone keypad. On pressing star 1, participants will get a chance to present their questions on a first online basis. To ask a question, participants may please press star 1 now. The first question comes from Mr. Kunal Vora from PNP Paribas, Mumbai. Mr. Vora, you may ask your question now. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, congrats for a good quarter, sir. Uh, first is, uh, how do you see the recent spectrum option impacting the prospects of new tower additions? 
do you think that operators will be able to take care of, of their capacity requirements and there could be moderation in new orders? That's one. And second one also I'll just uh, post. Uh, so of the 3.2 lakh co-locations which you have right now, how many will be coming up for renewal in FY22 and 23? And have the discussions on renewal terms already started? Uh, also with one of the operators facing funding issues, would you be open to ne negotiate a lower rent fees? And also, earlier we were expecting 2.5% uh, rent escalation annually to start somewhere in FY23. Is that still a fair assumption? So that's just a question. So uh, I, I'll take this uh, one with Vimal here. From, uh, Kunal, thank you very much for uh, your question. The first one is uh, around spectrum auction and impact. Uh, of the spectrum acquired by uh, our customers uh, on the rollout. Now, uh, uh, just a, a little background. Uh, I think that the auction ended on March 2nd uh, and possibly almost like 77,000 crores uh, was garnered for 855 megahertz. Uh, interesting, interestingly, all three operators uh, participated. And as I mentioned, it was quite asymmetric. Uh, two of those spectrums, the, the, the lowest end, 700 and 2.5, both remained unsold. Uh, you see, I think we need to we need to look at this uh, quite historically. While you know, uh, uh, operators acquire new spectrum and uh, uh, will be deployed to alleviate requirements uh, on capacity. We believe uh, for a country like India, this is a very short-term phenomenon. I think data volume continue to grow constantly. Uh, and this actually drives and makes addition of additional sites an ongoing requirement. Uh, if, you, if you actually look at uh, what is taking place uh, across some of the, the cities, I think you will probably realize that a lot of spectrum will be deployed to alleviate the current uh, pent up demand uh, uh, as well. So I don't see uh, much uh, uh, impact which we can kind of talk of. Uh, uh, while some of the capacity address would, uh, sorry, capacity sites could address get addressed uh, with this uh, uh, auction. Uh, I think if you if you look at the transcripts of uh, some of the the announcements made by the operators, I think intent of operators is very clear to go deep. Uh, uh, into uh, uh, interiors and have a deeper coverage as well. Now, how do we see this uh, in our uh, uh, breakup of sites which we roll out? Uh, we see certainly uh, uh, a site pattern which is 50-50, and I think this continues to be the same. So for 50% of our rollout, it is capacity. 50% of our uh, rollout uh, is for, for coverage. And there is a much bigger pent-up demand for sites at critical locations. As a matter of fact, uh, 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 you know, we are not able to deliver in uh, sites from critical locations as well. So I'm not uh, uh, too worried about any uh, large-scale impact uh, due to spectrum. Uh, however, this will generate a very good network-related activity as well, which is always a good exercise. This would also generate uh, high quality when it comes to our uh, network, and generally with higher quality consumption pattern gets positively impacted as well. So I think this this is answered to your first part, Kunal. Uh, the second one is around uh, the renewal coming up uh, 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 as well. I think uh, by end of this year, a third of our possibly portfolio uh, uh, will come up for uh, uh, renewal. And I think if you go back in time, we have, uh, if you go back, let's say by 2016 or so, uh, you know, when uh, escalation freeze uh, uh, happened, uh, we didn't possibly, uh, there was similar anxieties as well. Uh, uh, there was a good give and take between the, the operators and us. And I think we settled for a good win-win uh, situation uh, uh, for all. Hence, I'm not too, uh, uh, you know, worried about this as well, but this certainly remains a negotiation risk, which uh, uh, I would say we would cross when it comes as well. At this moment, 
there is nothing uh, significant or nothing to report when it comes to uh, um, engagement all other things remain on track uh, just that the uh, current situation seems a little different compared to last time you faced a similar situation because uh, at least at that time uh, the tenants seem to be financially better off compared to what uh, they are right now especially considering that like a large tenant right now is uh, i mean like might depend on some concessions uh, even for their viability well you are i i will certainly not denying what you are saying kunal and you are absolutely right uh, the situation is uh, stretched for our operators uh, uh, as well if you once again go back in time we managed to give certain concession uh, which was uh, escalation freeze however what we got was extension which i think was a very good win win situation for both uh, uh, operators and us uh, as well and as a result i think we are sitting with these renewals which would take place in 2022 which could have happened way earlier as well i'm certainly not denying that there won't be any negotiation but we believe that uh, we do hold cards and it won't be any way uh, you know one way street uh, uh, here so uh, and just uh, i hope that answers sure yeah and just on the 2 and 1/2 percent rent increase annually is it a fair assumption or right now we still need to wait and uh, see how the renegotiation go and once again uh, i don't think we are going to back off on anything but i'm uh, uh, this all this would form uh, entire package uh, uh, as well and uh, we'll keep you posted as as it progresses at this moment uh, suffice to say that uh, we do hold good cards uh we have a very amicable good relationship in which we can come up with a, a good win win solution uh, which we've done this in the past i think it's been the track record of this company so let me assure you uh moment this happens we will certainly share sure understood sir thank you that's it for my day. thank you thank you very much mr vora the next question comes from mr pranav shatriya from edelweiss mumbai Mr. Shatria, you may ask your question now. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. My first question is, uh, you know, little uh, uh, near term. Uh, you have seen, you know, tenancy cancellation rising in this quarter, uh, and and you know that was uh, there was a secular decline uh, in the previous quarters. Uh, but uh, this one, I don't know why, uh, you know, that has uh, you know kind of come up. Uh, and secondly. how should we see the tenancy ratio you know uh, sort of declining because uh, increasing tenancy ratio is very crucial uh, to maintain a solid return profile uh, but uh, because the tower additions are pretty high and uh, because of which uh, you know the tenancy ratio is sort of uh, getting impacted so uh, how how does company think about it uh considering you know the number of players also in the uh, are not as much in the ecosystem as they were earlier uh hence uh, uh you know what are your thoughts on that okay um thank you shukriya uh, uh for your question uh let me answer uh, on the exit part uh, uh exit needs to be looked at from a timing perspective and i think Uh, i remember it last time we did flag it that uh, generally there is a bump up uh, uh, of exits in march uh, which is uh, you know when the the financial year ends and uh, uh, operators do take this uh, uh, as a as a closure hence it comes up um, so uh, the the quarter four is is more like uh, uh, end of uh, year kind of uh, exit price so i won't uh, lose my heart beat on it i think important thing is the uh, year on year exits which certainly have halved and uh, we did mention earlier as that well that we are seeing plateauing on on uh, uh, the exits uh, part as well now on the the tenancy ratio uh, i think uh, the way one needs to look at it uh, uh, is that we continue to build uh, uh our portfolio with uh, fresh tower additions as well in our industry i think more more uh, uh, towers you add uh, uh, i think uh, you you build a portfolio for uh, the second tenant to come in and to that extent you are right 
uh, you know, at this moment, uh, there is an asymmetric rollout which is taking place amongst the operators. And, and the question certainly goes into uh, the fact that we will be seeing three operators uh, uh, fighting amongst each other, or three plus one, you can, you can call it, uh, uh, or we would uh, see two operators uh, competing amongst each other. And I did uh, uh, flag it last time as well that, uh, you know, look at it from regulator's perspective, look at it from chronology as well. We do believe uh, that uh, somewhat uh, uh, Penny is falling towards three uh, robust sound operators uh, competing with each other, which essentially means the third one get a, a straight uh, a takeoff strip through these uh, uh, additional towers which are being rolled out. And we believe that I think uh, uh, second tenant would be uh, uh, lucrative for the third operator to come in. I, I completely am aware that uh, the struggles which, let's say, BIL is facing currently as well. But uh, once again, chronology tells us that where they are and where they were uh, maybe around the, the last year, I think uh, they have managed to do quite a lot of things. And uh, from, a, from a tower company perspective, we certainly believe that uh, it would be a three-player market. So once again, wherever we sit, we have the industry best uh, a tenancy ratio. Uh, we believe it would be three-player market, and uh, obviously we will be offering uh, this portfolio to the third player, and uh, that is when I think uh, the tenancy ratio would start to bump up. Thank you, Shakya. Yeah, thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you very much, Mr. Shakya. The next question comes from Mr. Sanjay Chen from ICICI Securities, Mumbai. Mr. Jain, you may ask your question now. Good afternoon, and uh, thanks for taking the questions. A uh, couple of them from my side. Uh, first on the energy margin side, to be uh, indicated in the opening remark that uh, we have seen disputes coming down and hence the losses coming down. Uh, and we mentioned in the previous call that we are uh, engaging with the operator and negotiating to see if they can move to a fixed uh, energy margin again. So where are we in terms of negotiation and uh, is the worst behind in terms of energy margin? Should we assume that uh, henceforth we will be uh, uh, making no losses or a very minimal losses? Uh, is that the right way to think on the energy margin? That's one. Uh, number two on the operating cost. Uh, we have seen quite a volatile in last two quarters and just wanted to understand what is the steady state uh, full year um, uh, uh, operating cost, which is other expenses, repairs and maintenance, charity and uh, donations all put together. I think uh, this quarter charity and donations have been abnormally low. Uh, and uh, what is the what is the steady state uh, uh, OPEX uh, uh, added all these, all the three together? And on the last one, uh, can you update us on the uh, dividend policy, how should we see dividend? Uh, this year we have skipped the final dividend. Uh, earlier we had a policy of 60 to 80 percent uh, dividend payoff uh, uh, policy. Can you just update how to uh, see this dividend paying out uh, uh, from uh, this year onwards? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sandesh. Uh, I will take a shot at a uh, couple of those and then hand it over to Vikas uh, uh, as well. Uh, let me let me go in the order from uh, so uh, energy margin. I think your question was is uh, the worst uh, over. So let me back off. Uh, uh, last quarter we did mention that we are uh, engaged with our operator. Uh, I did mention that uh, I think there is a whole lot of alignment which we have on going towards fixed energy model. And I continue to maintain that. Uh, and obviously, I think this alignment is, is shielding uh, some of the better understanding of where we sit and uh, you know the, the pain points on both sides as well. And I think uh, when Vikas was alluding to uh, you know uh, a better quarter, I think uh, this was the result of it as well. Uh, in as much we wanted to announce uh, 
uh, the the closure of APM with one of our operators. I think the whole thing uh, split, uh, spilled away uh, uh, as well, and uh, we we remain very hopeful that uh, if not uh, you know uh, months, uh, we should be able to complete APM soon. Now that would possibly put uh, a very good alignment between us and operators, and uh, I think. Uh, uh, this is where we are actually uh, banking a lot, and we are very confident that we'll be able to uh, close FEMs with all our our customers. Uh, we are very close. Then next one is uh, whether worst is over. Uh, I would say probably if you only look back, I think we have only bettered ourselves. Uh, what happens in the near future? Uh, we will be putting pretty much our best efforts on that account. Uh, and I'm 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 really uh, hopeful that uh, uh, we'll be able to to deliver a, a better uh, energy margin quarter, or even come back and announce uh, FEMs with our uh, customers. Uh, I will I will keep the operating uh, costs and the steady state question uh, for Vikas, and maybe Vikas could possibly uh, take that one. On the dividend, I just wanted to uh, clear the air uh, a little bit. Uh, uh, you know, if you if you look at as a company, we are in still the six months of a relatively large merger, and we continue to proceed with this integration exercise, and we remain quite comfortable with uh, the payouts in uh, financial year 21, which incidentally, if you actually look at, were all-time highs, of which substantial portion was paid out in quarter four. Not only quarter four, I think. Uh, almost 30 days back as well. Uh, we will certainly assess the dividends in due course and uh, in line with the policy, come back to you again. Uh, however, we remain where we are right now. Uh, with this, uh, uh, Vikas, would you like to add? Yeah, sure. Uh, thanks, Nimal. So, hi, Sanjish. Um, on, I'll, I'll probably uh, just touch upon the dividend point first uh, in continuation with what Bimal said. So uh, I think, first of all, the company has a very strong track record of paying dividends, right? So uh, if you look at the history, we have a history of assessing this many times during the year. Uh, specifically on FY21, the board has reviewed the dividend payouts, uh, and it aggregates to, uh, if, you, if you really do the calculation, it aggregates to uh, rupees 20.12 uh, per share. This includes the first interim that we did uh, in quarter one, uh, which was uh, 2.3 rupees per share. And then the one uh, which we did as a special dividend of 17.82 rupees uh, just uh, you know, a couple of uh, weeks back. Uh, and, and together, uh, basically, this constitutes about 20.12 rupees. Now, in terms of the payout ratio, you were talking about 60 to 80%. If you really look at this FI21 payout, this would aggregate to roughly 110% of the cash flow. So we have done much better than uh, what we have done historically. I mean, this is perhaps one of the highest uh, rupee dividend we have ever paid out in our history. Uh, and, and just a couple of weeks back, we did that large payout. Uh, and, and as Bimal was saying, uh, like we have done in the past, we will continue to sort of endeavor to return the excess cash to our shareholders. And our policy with regard to dividend uh, remains the same. So we will continue to sort of pay uh, dividend based on our free cash flow. Uh, coming to your uh, the second question, which is on the operating cost uh, and the volatility, I think uh, the, the way I would like to put it is, I think there are basically uh, in our business, uh, uh, you know, some sometimes these uh, uh, these volatility and fluctuation because of the nature of the business. So. For example, if I look at the charities and donations, uh, we already did uh, some excess in the till, till quarter three, and as a result, we did not uh, really uh, spend much in, in quarter four. As per the statute, we were not required to spend more. And secondly, uh, the nature of the business is such that we do see uh, technical one-off provisions being created and then sometimes reversed in the next quarter. Um, and this, all this really creates uh, fluctuation quarter on quarter. Uh, to the extent uh, all these are material, we certainly call out and we disclose these things in our calls and in and, and our reports. Uh, but otherwise, uh, pretty much uh, on a long-term basis, if you look at the year-on-year, -year, uh, things really look very stable. Things, things don't really show so much fluctuation. 
Um, so I hope this answers your question, sir, Sanjish. Yeah, thanks, Vimal, and thanks, Vikas, for the elaborated answer. A couple of follow-up on that. Uh, is a full year representative for the operating cost? Well, again, uh, I would uh, basically say even on a full year basis, uh, sometimes we do have these uh, fluctuations because of the technical provisions. Uh, again, given the nature of the industry and the nature of the business. So last year, we did have uh, some extra provisions. Similarly, in quarter three, if you recall, we, we did call out uh, some provisions on account of policy alignments and so on. So to that extent, I think year on year, uh, probably uh, at an overall level would be quite stable. Uh, but we will need to go deeper uh, to really answer the specific question. So maybe we could take it offline, Sanjay, in case there's anything specific you're looking for. Sure, thank you. Just one last question from my side, again, related to dividend policy and capital structure. Uh, do we intend to maintain this uh, debt for our financial leverage? Because uh, we have always talked about uh, improving our capital structure and hence uh, positively uh, impacting our return ratios. So to that extent, uh, is it fair to assume that we will maintain these kind of uh, debt levels on a balance sheet and we will try to distribute maximum cash flow? Is that a fair assumption? Um, well, I, I think uh, it's a fair assumption, uh, basically, because if you look at our leverage ratio, it is at about 1.45, which is quite healthy and, and well within our debt covenants. Um, so uh, I think it's a fair assumption given our profile that we are comfortable with our leverage and going forward we will we will be within our covenants and uh, the dividend payout as per the policy uh, should be well maintained. Great and uh, thanks for all the answers. Best wishes. Thank you, Sanjish. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Jen. To ask a question, participants may please press star one. The next question comes from Mr. Neerab Dalal from Maybank Securities, Mumbai. Mr. Dalal, you may ask your question now. The next question comes from Mr. Chetan Shah from Abacus ANC, Mumbai. Mr. Shah, you may ask your question now. Yeah, hi, uh, sir. Good afternoon, and thank you for an opportunity. Just one, uh, one basic and a technical question. Uh, the way the the broadband penetration is happening, and a lot of technology changes in the form of uh, uh, what uh, different companies are talking about, satellite-based uh, data connectivity and all. I'm just trying to understand that uh, at what level of uh, number of power uh, uh, we would be happy to, and at what level we'll stop uh, adding more number of towers. Uh, if you can give some some sense on on, on that, uh, we'll be very happy. Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shah, for uh, asking this question. If I if I just uh, link the two things which you may, uh, said uh, uh, on one side, broadband penetration. On the other side, uh, uh, you also mentioned uh, uh, satellite companies making uh, uh, headway into uh, broadband. Uh, your question apparently is, uh, will it impact the number of towers uh, that would be needed uh, in the future? Uh, uh, and assuming this as a question, I would I would kind of like Correct. to answer this. Uh, Correct, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, look, I think I'll, I'll go a little bit uh, historic and also into uh, uh, some kind of physics here as well. Now, uh, if you go back uh, uh, in, in time, I think time will tell us uh, uh, that uh, uh, you know, uh, Iridium, uh, Turaya, Global Star, uh, I think uh, there were lots of uh, companies who were actually trying to provide either uh, the Leo Mu or as they call it the, the geo satellites uh, 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 as well. Now uh, I think with uh, physics uh, really playing a role, uh, you do need uh, 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 a lot of low noise amplifiers on one side, and second, the uh, uh, technology catering to uh, the time delays which takes place uh, with lower is with the Leo. 
uh, and highest with the geostationary satellite uh, 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 as well. Uh, this physics itself makes it a little bit cumbersome, and I'm sure the technology is uh, kind of overcoming all this uh, 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 as well as we go uh, uh, forward. But ubiquitous, uh, uh, comparable, commercially comparable alternate to broadband, which uh, you know, uh, uh, current technologies or terrestrial technologies are providing. I don't see that as a competition. Uh, on the contrary, uh, this would be looked at as a complementary technology to what is being done uh, uh, as well. Hence, areas where it is very difficult to connect uh, uh, terrestrially will be used. Uh, uh, this technology would certainly be used as it was used in the past uh, uh, as well. So, you know, when we do, let's say, the threats to the industry, I don't see this as a threat earlier if you actually want to bring in a parallel uh, the loom uh, uh, project as well. Uh, I think uh, we all are aware what uh, happened to loon. Uh, uh, I'm not saying that uh, in the horizon there will not be a technology coming in which could kind of disrupt. And as a as a, a company, we should always be mindful of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, where we are heading and what is on the horizon as well. But at this moment, I think commercially and otherwise. Uh, this remains uh, one of the best, cheapest, and more uh, uh, inclusive option of providing the, the, the broadband to the masses as well. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for a, for a, such an inward answer. The whole, thank you. whole con context to understand uh, and reason behind that is uh, 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 to get a sense that eventually at what level we can pick out uh, uh, as a one as a tower and second uh, the utilization of tower in terms of tenancy issues so so but this give a good flavor of uh, of, of of the business uh, matrix thank you sir thanks a lot thank you mr shah thank you very much mr shah the next question comes from mr vishnu from gm financial mumbai mr vishnu you may ask your question now uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, could you please uh, throw some light on uh, what are the frontier-related activities that are you know, going on in the market? And if you could uh, throw some light on the company's strategy to participate in the frontier, especially on the small scale and the non-tower side, uh, uh, side of the business. Thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I missed your question, Vishnu. Uh, uh, if you can be a little slow and uh, repeat your question. Apologies. Sure, sir. So I was just asking, like, uh, I mean, the operators have announced their intention to uh, roll out 5G in the near term. So what are the kind of activities, if you could broadly throw some light uh, on the kind of activities that is happening in the market? And if you could throw some light on investor strategy to participate in this 5G, especially on the non tower side of the business, like the small scale and the other aspects that would be really helpful. Okay, thank you, thank you, Vishnu. I think your your question, if I understand it right, is what kind of activities which are taking place in the 5G domain amongst the operators uh, uh, as well, and how is Indus Towers uh, uh, participating or collaborating in, in uh, those? And I think your your color is around, uh, or your your qualification is around, let's say, uh, uh, small cells, uh, 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 etc. So firstly, if you, if, you, if you go go back in time, I think it would be very interesting to see what kind of announcements that have been made. And if you if you look at the transcripts of uh, uh, what was announced last quarter between the operators, it certainly uh, makes everybody believe that uh, uh, it is it is 5G waves which is on. Uh, let's say uh, you know uh, uh, from uh, our geo perspective, you've probably seen. Uh, the uh, announcement of indigenous uh, and a collaborative approach towards rollout of 5G. Uh, I think uh, Airtel went ahead and I think there were some interesting questions around the uh, uh, bragging rights of uh, 5G, which Airtel certainly hogged by uh, demonstrating uh, you know, a, a live demo in, in Hyderabad. Now, these, these, are, these are very symbolic uh, uh, moves which have been made which cannot be rolled back in any form. 
which essentially means the race is on. From here on, I think next steps that would take place is spectrum auction, garnering of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, money uh, uh, for uh, the 5G race. It would be interesting to see uh, that who all participate because not participating might not be be uh, sustainable for any operator whatsoever as well. Is it needed? Is it something which will be uh, good uh, for the industry and for uh, the end user? I think no doubt about it. If you go deeper into the technology, I am a firm believer that uh, this is a, a technology which is way different. It is constructed very way differently as well and provide hits on not only capacity and speeds, but also latency, which gives rise to a lot of interesting uh, use cases. And obviously, uh, the contribution, in my opinion, of 5G to the, to the GDP is going to be very, very uh, uh, high as well. Now, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'll just extrapolate uh, uh, this question on what kind of activities which are taking place uh, uh, for preparation of uh, 5G, I think one interesting thing I would like to point out is recent acquisition um, uh, of uh, Iber, uh, acquiring 100% stake in Ubico Networks uh, uh, to provide neutral IBS and DAT space. And if you actually read the announcements there, uh, this is more like uh, providing uh, neutral uh, uh, IBS and DAT uh, uh, for in preparation of 5G as well. And since 5G will be rolled out in higher bands, uh, uh, I think this is one thing which will be uh, uh, important and interesting besides uh, the backhaul. For us, I think there is only one way, and we have learned this, we have done it, we have proven it as well. Uh, for any new technology which comes in uh, to work uh, very closely with the customers, uh, very confidentially with the customers as well, see what kind of strategies they are adopting because as you would know infrastructure comes ahead of technology and i think uh, uh, even if the whole thing will be rolled out initially on the existing sites i think we will certainly uh, be standing ahead of our uh, customers and making uh, uh, a shorter of the time to market uh, uh, as well i don't think I, I can get into any further specifics here besides the fact that um, uh, whatever we are doing currently in, in 4G domain is an advanced preparation for 5G uh, uh, as well. But I certainly believe we need to watch this uh, space closely. Thank you. Sure, so that's really helpful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vishnu. Our next question comes from Mr. Neerav Dalal from Maybank Securities, Mumbai. Mr. Dalal, you may ask your question now. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. I was actually on mute last time. Yeah, I have uh, three questions. First is on the depreciation. We saw depreciation lower on a QMQ basis this quarter. Uh, what would be the steady state going ahead? That is number one. Now, number two is that uh, uh, telcos have acquired uh, Spectrum in the, in, in, in the last uh, auction. Uh, any benefits for us uh, when this spectrum is deployed? That is number two. And uh, number three is uh, uh, there was this announcement uh, some time back that the telecom department is allowing sharing of uh, tower backhaul infrastructure and Wi-Fi equipment. Anything for us uh, in this? Thank you. And thanks, Nirav. Uh, in these questions, I would uh, leave the first question to be answered by uh, 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 Vikas. Uh, I'll take the second and third uh, post his answer. Over to you, Vikas. Yeah, sure. Um, so, Nirav, I think as far as the depreciation is concerned, uh, there was a policy change that happened uh, in the current year post merger as a result of which uh, we have a year-on-year -year impact. Um, does that answer your question, Nidhav? So uh, going ahead in terms of steady state, how should one look at uh, depreciation? I think the, the current quarter is after the policy change, so pretty much uh, I would say it's a steady state. Uh, thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Vikas. I'll go to the second question in a way. Actually, I have answered this question, but I think your question is around any benefit around this. I think, uh, firstly, there will be a large-scale network transformation activity which would take place. And I think whenever a network transformation activity takes place, it's always beneficial. Can I quantize the benefits? No. I think the benefit certainly would be the quality of networks would certainly go up. Now, I, I hope we all understand what operators or our customers are going through and the, the complexity of all uh, uh, migrating traffic as well. Now, if you remember last, last year around this time, we were we came to a grinding halt when it comes to uh, uh, you know our uh, economic activity we certainly got into lockdown what does lockdown mean uh, you know i'll just take gurgaon example uh, from or maybe mumbai example a lot of you, you guys are from uh, uh, mumbai uh, bkc traffic came crashing down because people stopped traveling to BKC. However, the traffic generation, let's say on the high rise in condos, really went up. Now, managing that kind of a spike really generates, uh, uh, you know, a network transformation and operators started to run in that direction. Uh, and all of us were, uh, were in that, uh, trying to manage that uh, you know, traffic and traffic growth as well. Then came, you know, uh, quarter two, quarter three, when started, things started to ease off as well. And now suddenly, we are also seeing some kind semblance of uh, lockdowns as well. So it's not as though you can port, uh, you know, uh, uh, capacities from one place to the other uh, overnight as well. Hence, uh, you know, when, when spectrum, additional spectrum comes in, such pent-up demand is uh, is clearly addressed. Quality of these networks become very good. Uh, you sh you'll be able to to do things uh, from the dark spots uh, uh, as well. You will get capacities on time, and hence you would end up consuming more, which only starts the spiral of more requirement of more number of sites as well. Can I okay. uh, uh, quantize the benefits? No, I don't think I can quantize uh, the benefits here as well. But it generally augurs well when the network activity goes up as well for companies like ours. The third question, third question, question you had was around, uh, you know, DOT coming up with uh, uh, sharing of infra. All this, uh, as I as I said, uh, you know, is uh, uh, is a good thing. We as IP1 registration providers have uh, certainly been looking at uh, those things, including, you know, I think there has been a lot of uh, 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 noise, a lot of action around PM1E uh, uh, as well. Uh, but I must uh, remind you that we are still looking at um, our, our strategy of keeping an eye on those things as well. And I think as a company, as, uh, uh, you know, we evaluate this, we would certainly come back to you with what is it that we would like to go, which direction, and we would be certainly sharing this with you. With the current mm -hmm. development, I think uh, the options become a lot more loud and clear to us. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Nirav. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dalal. The next question comes from Mr. Vivek Ramakrishnan from BSP Mutual Fund, Mumbai. Mr. Ramakrishnan, you may ask your question now. So thank you. Uh, you had talked about debt covenants. Uh, I just wanted to know what the debt covenants are in terms of uh, the total net debt EBITDA that you can go to. And you said you were comfortable at these levels. Uh, and if the covenants are at a higher level, what would push you to go to a higher level? Thanks. Because you may like to take this one. Yeah, I'll take this. Um, so I think uh, the debt covenants, uh, so first of all, thank you, Vivek, for the question. So debt covenants uh, current, uh, currently are at about 1.25 against our uh, limit of 3.5. So as you can see, we are at a very comfortable level. Uh, well, technically, uh, one could say we can go up to 3.5 because that's our limit. And what would uh, take us to higher debt levels is, of course, uh, basically when we start thinking about investing in other growth areas, um, uh, which could possibly take us up, but currently that's uh, that's really not uh, uh, very clear in terms of the numbers. So, um, 
so we are we are quite comfortable and and basically going forward we will see if we need more debt okay thanks a lot that was my only question thank you thank you very much mr ramakrishnan we do have a follow up question from mr kunal vora from bnp paribas mumbai mr vora you may ask your question now yeah thanks for the opportunity follow up opportunity like so a uh, couple of questions one is are you seeing any inflationary pressure on cost of constructing towers because certain commodities such as steel have seen a spike and also have there been any major design changes and uh, such that uh, cost of constructing a tower site like i mean over the last 4 5 years have you seen any changes in the structure so that you can actually lower the cost of constructing tower mm -hmm. uh thank you thank you kunal i think it's a it's a very pertinent uh, uh, question uh yes i think uh, these inflationary uh, uh, pressures keep on uh, coming i think uh, uh, we we saw steel becoming uh, uh, you know uh, cheaper and uh, now the whole thing is uh, going uh, way different as well our in in uh, uh, in our scheme of things uh, Uh, we do have a uh, reasonable mm -hmm. amount of uh, uh, negotiating powers with our uh, partners as well which i think keeps this uh, this entire thing within check and control uh, uh, as well and doesn't kind of uh, uh, show up i think the interesting question is uh, which actually has a bearing on your your first question uh, do we make uh, design changes to we and how things have uh, or uh, changed over a over a period uh, uh, as well to answer your question yes and you would be witnessing uh, in your cities as well the kind of towers which used to come up let's say uh, 10 years back uh, to the towers which uh, actually came up 5 years back to the towers which are coming in now uh, uh, as well and i think uh, the 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 current set of towers are certainly a different product different genre as well uh when it comes to their uh, uh, load bearing capacity as well uh, and even uh, uh, the way they are built so i think from a foundation perspective to the tower perspective to the steel used uh, uh, to the design i think everything has gone through a change and it continues to evolve and uh, now let's say with higher spectrum being rolled out a uh, requirement and uh, uh, greater percolation of uh, fiber and connected towers specifically in in uh, cities requirement of large towers is certainly coming down and we sir, we are getting into very different kind of towers and the cost per tower obviously is uh, you know impacted in a in a good way uh, for let's say rural i think uh, we we also have evolved the design uh, uh, as well and i think those towers if we compare what we used to make are are way uh, more efficient than uh, what used to be uh, rolled out let's say 10 years back so this is a this is an evolving uh, 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 thing and now we have lots of solutions and products for our customers as well for their roll out and i think this this is something which we are very proud of uh, with our scale uh with our experience i think uh, all this plays uh, very well in our favor hope this answer very helpful yeah yeah yeah, yeah that that's very helpful this one last question if i may uh, can you talk about any new initiatives which you are pursuing sometime back there were like new reports that uh, industry considering hosting ev charging stations and uh, like creating that kind of infrastructure also you talked about fiber in the past anything else anything which you can highlight also on the ev part anything which you done and any feedback which you can provide so once again kunal i think uh, i personally remain extremely passionate about all uh, what you just mentioned and in fact i shared what i had to last time on on ev uh, some of you who follow uh, uh, you know the the uh, ev sector uh, i think you could you could possibly have a rub off of excitement on on that because that also happens to be a location business uh, unfortunately i would like to take you to uh, uh, the strategy and the closure of the, the strategy and would kind of come back and reveal what we intend doing in in various spaces and what we intend uh, uh, possibly uh, uh, playing in or not playing into as well uh one thing i can i can say that 
uh, yes, the initial pilots were done, and I think uh, it's it's quite possible to have, uh, let's say, a marginal cost upgrade for uh, our charging equipment uh, to provide, uh, you know, uh, uh, charging for EV vehicles. However, depends on the size, depends on the solution as well. So uh, don't take my wide brush statement here. Uh, however, it remains a very, very good possibility. Understood. We'll watch out for that. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vora. At this moment, there are no further questions from participants. I would now hand over the call proceedings to Mr. Bimal Dayal for the final remarks. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I think this was a, a great session. Uh, um, however, uh, before I, I, I give my uh, closing remarks, uh, I just have a, a announcement to make. Uh, uh, Surbi Chandana, who's uh, our investor relations head, she's the one who's uh, uh, been holding this portfolio for more than five years, uh, seen ups and downs uh, along with this company, has been answering all your queries, uh, uh, you know, 24 cross 7, uh, uh, has been, you know, a rock solid uh, pillar here has decided to move on. And in as much we wanted to continue to have her uh, with us, uh, uh, she, she uh, is going for some uh, you know, purple pastures as well. Uh, with this, I certainly wanted to tell Surbi how great job she's done so far, uh, how she's, uh, along with others, built this company as well. So uh, I just wanted to wish uh, all the very best inform all of you as well uh, about this change and uh, Mr. Kostav Nyogi will be standing in until we come back to you with, uh, uh, you know, who would be, be taking over uh, this portfolio. Uh, before uh, I, I give my closing remarks, I'll hand it over to Surbi to certainly say a, a, a few words on, on her journey uh, and uh, be a little nostalgic about uh, about her uh, association as well. Over to you, Subi. Thank you, Vimal. Thanks for your very, very kind words. Uh, honestly, it's been a real pleasure to be part of this organization in both of ours uh, for the last five years, first as Bharti Satel and now as a larger organization as Invest Towers. So it's been um, a really fulfilling personal uh, and professional journey for me. Uh, since we have the larger group, I, I can just take this opportunity. I would also want to thank um, the analysts and the investor community who have been giving their insights and engaging with us and feedback over the last uh, you know, five years to me. It has obviously helped me uh, personally and professionally. We've always been able to try to take it up uh, to management in terms of feedback. So I think um, I would really appreciate um, you know, that they continue to extend the same support to the management and industry, uh, industry investor relations going forward. And uh, personally, I can say I hope to stay connected and wishing everybody uh, the best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kurbi. Um, I'm sure uh, you'll do well no matter where you are. Uh, God bless you. Uh, for now, for my closing remarks, uh, and generally I, I sort of, uh, give some points or pointers as well. Uh, just a reiteration here, we did manage to deliver a strong quarter and a full year, uh, which is uh, uh, the previous year. Demand side actually looks strong with heavy data growth, which really augurs well. Uh, new spectrum, as, I, as we discussed and uh, uh, touched upon as well, will be deployed and great network activity which takes place, which in my opinion is uh, generally very good. Uh, next quarter remains an interesting, important quarter, uh, not only from uh, the foundational quarter for uh, uh, next financial year. I think from merger related activities as well, it's a very uh, important quarter in which we, we wanted to finish off all important and deeper integration uh, uh, stuff, uh, including the platforms. 
Uh, the fifth bullet I wanted to touch upon was please. Uh, uh, we discussed a lot of business uh, and a lot of parameters here, but uh, when it comes to safety uh, versus business, I think uh, certainly the, the the safety takes priority. So uh, I certainly wanted uh, each one of you uh, to please keep yourself safe uh, and your family members as well. Uh, because this is an unprecedented uh, situation of uh, wave two of uh, uh, this pandemic. Uh, we are experiencing all this across all our uh, geographies and uh, territories as well, and uh, really dabbling uh, between a difficult choice, uh, as they say, between life and business. Obviously, life certainly takes uh, priority. Uh, with this, uh, let me wish each one of you being safe uh, and your families too as well. God bless. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the conference call. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you for connecting to audio conference service from Airtel and have a pleasant evening. You have been dropped from the conference by the chairperson. Bye.